Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today's video is twofold. One is it's my June TBR, so we're going to talk about all of my reading plans for June, but also I am announcing the start of a new read-along that I'm doing with some fellow booktubers. We don't have all of the details planned out yet, but we do have the first book of the read-along we're doing where we will be picking up some classic or I guess you could say vintage lesbian romances and discussing them which I think is going to be a really good time. June is pride month and so it seemed like the perfect time to launch this read-along and of course you are going to see lots of queer books in my TBR for the month. Joining me for the first book in this vintage lesbian romance read-along are Amanda from The Naughty Librarian, Ashley from Bookish Realm, Izzy from Happy For Now, Michelle from Thor Wants Another Letter, and Rachel from Reads With Rachel. I am so excited. I love this group of people and I think we're gonna have a really good time. We have a list of books that we're planning on getting to in the coming months, but for June the first book we're reading is also the one that was published the earliest. This is Patience and Sarah by Isabel Miller. This book was originally published in 1969. It is considered a lesbian classic and I'm very excited to read it and discuss it with everyone. This edition also includes an introduction discussing it. It's not very long, and there is an audiobook if you're an audio listener, so I think this one should be particularly accessible. Some of the other ones are out of print and a little bit harder to find. It's a bit of a mix, but we'll let you know when they come up. Patience and Sarah traces the relationship between a painter and a farmer whose romantic bond does not sit well with the puritanical New England farming community in which they live. Ultimately, they are forced to make life-changing decisions that depend on their courage and their commitment to one another. What's interesting about this is that this was first self-published in an edition of a thousand copies that the author hand-sold on New York street corners. Um, it eventually won the American Library Association's first gay book award in 1971 and then it was picked up by a traditional publisher and went mainstream. I think this is going to be a really interesting book to read. I hope you will join us. We will have a live show so stay tuned for details about that but it's going to be fun and we have even more <laughs> and we have even more fun classic and vintage lesbian romances that we're going to be reading throughout the year. So it's gonna be a good time. Next up for my Patreon and member book club, every month some of my patrons get a chance to vote on a book that we'll read together. We do a different theme every month and of course it's June, it's Pride Month, so of course the theme was queer science fiction or fantasy. The book that won was Bluebird by C.L. Pierre Lowe. This is from a small press and I'm super excited about it. It's like a sapphic space western adventure type thing, a rollicking space adventure with a lot of heart. Following Rig, a gunslinger, outlaw, and thief with a ship called Bluebird, they've spent years keeping a single step ahead of the galaxy's factions and their age-old game. But the game just got deadly serious. Pyrite has Rig's sister, and Rig has something they want. If she doesn't hand it over, her sister dies. With Panache and Pizzazz, a librarian girlfriend, and a lethal bounty hunter as a passenger, Rig's here to be gay, do crimes, and hopefully not die in the process. I think this is going to be really fun, so this is our book club pick for June. Again, very appropriate. Then every month some of my higher tier patrons have the chance to suggest and vote on books that they want to see me vlog. I do an exclusive reading vlog every month for patrons and channel members at five dollars a month and above and for this month it is The World We Make by N.K. Jemisin. Jemisin is one of my all-time favorite authors and I am so excited to read this. I loved The City We Became. I'm sure I'm gonna have a great time with this and this was the perfect opportunity to read it. So I'll be reading this and doing an exclusive vlog in June. Then I've got three other read-alongs going that I'm reading books for. Two of them are associated with Chapter 3 Podcast that I co-host along with Izzy from Happy For Now and Leanna from Leanna's Library. With Izzy, I am continuing with the Dark Olympus read-along. We're going to be reading Wicked Beauty by Katie Robert. This is book three and this is what? Achilles? Oh, so this is Achilles, Patroclus, and Helen of Troy, a modern erotic retelling of them. I think all three of them falling in love, so that should be fun. Then with Liana, we are continuing the Witcher read-along and we'll be reading Baptism of Fire, so stay tuned for that. We will have live episodes for both of those to come in the month of June. 
last read-along book is continuing the Circle of Magic read-along, which I've been having so much fun with. We're going to be reading Daja's book by Tamora Pierce. This is the third book, and I don't know if I announced this or if people saw it, but we did decide that we're going to go ahead and continue on to the second quartet once we're finished with the first one. So even more fun Circle of Magic content coming your way. Again, there will be a live show at the end of the month where we will discuss it. So that's all the book clubs and read-alongs and stuff like that. Then I do have some books for review that I'm going to try to get to. There is some stuff that's getting rolled over from May. May was not the month I expected it to be, and so there are quite a few things, especially on NetGalley, that are coming out in July that I'm probably going to read in June. I have some physical advance copies, and then I have a handful of just queer books that have been sitting on my bookshelf that I would like to read this month if I have time, because I'm going to try to prioritize those books since it is Pride Month. We'll see what I get to. In terms of physical books, the first one I think I did actually mention in May's TBR video, but I'm going to be reading A Song of Salvation by Alicia Dow. I did know that it was unlikely I'd get to it in May. I just didn't realize how unlikely because the month did not end up going the way I had planned, but I am going to read this in June. I love Alicia Dow. She writes fun, diverse YA science fiction that's got a lot of heart to it, and this is set in the same universe as her last two novels. Coming out in July is The Jassad Air by Sarah Hashem. This is an adult fantasy debut coming out from Orbit, and I was sent an early copy of it. It sounds great. Get ready for an unmissable tale of shattered kingdoms, forbidden magic, and cunning royals in this Egyptian-inspired epic fantasy debut. I think it's going to be really fun. At 10 years old, the heir of Jassad fled a massacre that consumed her entire Entire family. At 15, she buried her first body. At 20, her carefully crafted lies are starting to crumble. Very excited. Then for contemporary romance, I've got The Front Porch Club by Michelle Major. She writes like cute small town romance that's kind of women's fiction-y, and this is set in the same town as some other things I've read from her enjoyed. This one feels more on the women's fiction end, honestly, than others, but I don't mind. It sounds like fun. They have nothing in common except a need to start over. This one follows two women who were enemies but become friends, and then I think they also find love. I don't know. I think this is definitely more on the women's fiction end, but I like her writing. I think it'll be fun. And then lastly, one that I might try out just because it's pretty short is Flight and Anger by Nicole Corner Stace. This goes on sale June 13th and I was sent an advanced copy from Tachyon Press. So it says it's from the world of the breakout novel Firebreak, which I have not read, an exciting new adventure of corporate corruption, dangerous flight, and uncertain loyalty. After a daring escape from a prison lab, two young modified soldiers arrive in a freezing cold city where they have no resources. With time running out, a sinister handler pitting the operatives against each other will be the biggest threat to their mutual survival. Yeah, it could be fun. It's under 200 pages, so I may try that out. And then the three queer books that I just grabbed from my bookshelves that I've been wanting to read that I may get to. There are others, but these are some of them. I was recently gifted the third Tea Dragon book, The Tea Dragon Tapestry by Kay O'Neill. I love these. They're so cute and sweet and heartwarming middle grade queer graphic novels. I mean, like, oh my god, they're so cute. The little dragons grow tea out of their heads. I just, I need this in my life, so I think I'm gonna prioritize it. I've also been meaning to read for like a year The Honeys by Ryan Lasala, which is YA horror. I've heard really good things about it. I enjoyed Ryan Lasala's debut. I think it is time that I pick this up, so I might try to do that. And then another one that looks fun is Margo Zimmerman Gets the Girl by Brianna R. Shroom and Sarah Waxelbaum. This is like a YA sapphic romance that just sounds really adorable. It's got a girl who is great at everything she does. She has three swim team records, a student body president, and has her whole future figured out until a game of spin the bottle gone awry leads to an epiphany. She's gay. <laughs> she feels like she needs a tutor to figure out her gayness. Enter Abby Sokoloff, who has her own gayness down to a science. She's been out for years and has tapped into the queer community in her suburban Florida town. What she doesn't have is a passing grade in U.S. history, which threatens her acceptance into her dream school. All she needs is the right tutor. So they make a deal. It sounds super cute. So um, those are some things that I may pick up depending on how things go. And then of course I've got some things on NetGalley. Again, I did mention some of these in my May TBR, but even then I wasn't sure if I would get to them. So this month I will probably get to more of them, but we'll see. It's also going to be a busy month. So I, I don't know. I feel like June's busy because it's the kids last month of school. We're gearing up for summer and then summer I always read less. So 
we'll see what I can get to. It's it's fine. First up, we have Their Vicious Games by Joelle Wellington. This is like a YA thriller that sounds really fun. They're saying it's a thriller that's Ace of Spades meets Squid Game with a sprinkling of The Bachelor, where a black teen desperate to regain her Ivy League acceptance enters an elite competition only to discover the stakes aren't just high, they're deadly. This sounds like everything I need in my life. It sounds really fun. I like this kind of thing and I'm excited to check out this debut. Then we have The Legacies by Jessica Goodman. I've really enjoyed some of her YA mystery thrillers in the past and again I'm a sucker for these like elite teenager stories. I just think they're really interesting. This one is a murder mystery. Old money, new secrets, one killer party. Scoring an invitation for membership to the exclusive Legacy Club in New York City is more than an honor. It gives you a lifetime of access to power and wealth beyond any prep school doors and guaranteed safety and security as Legacy Club members always look out for their own. That is, after you make it through a rigorous week of events and the extravagant and gala the legacy ball this sounds really fun i love this kind of premise so i think it'll be a good time perfect for heading into summer i've also got a benny song by p to jelly clark this is his first middle grade novel and it is a fantasy it looks amazing i love his writing excited to check that out camp damascus by chuck tingle I'm so excited for this. It is his first full length horror novel that takes place at like a Christian conversion camp, kind of like pray the gay away thing. I feel like it's going to be excellent, especially because this month I read his horror novella straight and it was great. So stay tuned. I'll be talking about it at the end of the month. I was already excited for Camp Damascus, but having read and enjoyed that, I'm, I'm even more looking forward to this one. Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno-Garcia, one of my favorite authors. I think this is going to be great. It's a return to horror and it deals with a horror film, I think. I don't remember the exact details, but I always love her books. She is an auto buy for me. And then continuing with the horror movie train, I've got Burn the Negative by Josh something. Let me find it by Josh Winning. This sounded fun. It says it's a mashup of horror and suspense where a notorious slasher film is being remade and the curse that haunted it is reawakened. Listen, I think it'll be great. I'm definitely in the mood for like summer horror thrillers, so I'm excited that all of these are going to be on my reading list for the month. Lastly, I've got a couple of audiobooks from NetGalley. First is The Alchemy of Moonlight by David Ferrero. This is a, I think, debut, but I'm not sure, but it's a YA paranormal historical gay romance looks like fun. And then I have a copy of All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby. I've read one book from him that I really loved and I'm excited to check this one out as well. He was the author of Razorblade Tears and this is another kind of dark mystery thriller set in the south. It says Titus Crown is the first black sheriff in the history of Sharon County. A former FBI agent and security expert, Titus came home to take care of his father and look out for his troubled younger brother. He ran for sheriff to make a difference, especially in the black community, which has so often been treated unfairly by the police. But a year to the day after his election, a school shooting rocks the town. A beloved teacher is killed by a former student, and as Titus attempts to de-escalate and get the boy to surrender, his deputies fire a fatal shot. In the investigation, it becomes clear that the student they shot had been abused by the dead teacher as well as by unidentified perpetrators. The trail leads to buried bodies and secrets. This sounds super interesting and relevant. There's like more in the description, but I'm excited to see his take on this. I think it'll be really good. So um, those are all of the things that are kind of tentatively on my TBR for the month. As per usual, I probably will not get to all of them, but the majority of them I will pick up and I'm excited to see how it goes. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for question of the day, tell me what kind of books you're in the mood for right now because I am definitely getting in that mood for like the summer mystery thriller thing. That feels like a mood right now. What are you feeling? And let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.